Uh, the first was made in Scotland and then ourselves. And they're actually 150 years old, but they're here since 1907. Um, as you can see, we're all gathered here for one of the nine arts represented in our logo, which is the visual arts. And I think you'll all agree it's a breathtaking exhibition. And I think these paintings <coughs> need to, you need to be seduced by them, you need to be brought in by them. You need to study them, bring them home, and they bring you a different direction every night. Trust me, I'm looking at art for so many years, I know. Anyway, without further ado, let me introduce world-famous musician. Um, very special. <laughs> very special guest opener, uh, Paul Harrington. I'm sure you know uh, your vision winner. Fabulous song. And he is now actually going to especially open for here on tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As usual, Kieran gave me plenty of notice for this. Last <laughs> night. <nice. laughs> Would you mind saying a few words? Anyway, I get on with before uh, I came here today. I looked up. I looked up the definition of art. That's a pretty tall order. Can you imagine somebody asking you to do that? Like, define art. What is art? <laughs> anyway, somebody had to do it because I found it. Where did I find it? I found it on the internet, of course. See, it's so easy. All you have to do is go to your phone, and everything's at your fingertips. Anything from uh, selfie addiction to whatever uh, tickets you fancy. Anyway, in fact, if you wanted to look up or find a Picasso, a Van Gogh, a Rousseau, or even a Burke, you can conjure it all up on your iPhone or your iPad, and there it will be in all its glory, but not quite. In truth, there's nothing can touch or hold a candle to standing in front of the real thing. You know, maybe it's just me, but... Uh, Last summer, I was in New York, there I go bragging again, <laughs> in the uh, Museum of Modern Art, and I, I, I stood in front of, of uh, Van Gogh's The Starry Night, and I was surrounded by flashes, clicking phones and ringing cameras. I meant to say that, but that's just show business. Karen and I get, go through that all the time. <laughs> but anyway, well, I'm kidding. And my point is, through all this mayhem uh, going on around me, I just stood there mesmerized by the, the, the complete beauty, the reality. The canvas, the point, or, or should, I, should I say the paint, the artist's loving hands, and uh, that sense that you're looking through the artist's eyes. Van Gogh long gone, and yet I can still experience his vision from kind of 30 odd years before the rising. Which is a, I suppose I'm kind of describing it as a, a unique and privileged perspective that uh, us humans have. And we have that opportunity tonight. We can get inside the mind of Kieran Burke, if we dare. <laughs> so that's what we're doing here tonight. We're here celebrating a new exhibition of work by the artist, Kieran Burke. So on his behalf, and that of the United Arts Club, it's my privilege to welcome you all here uh, to the United Arts Club in Dublin to mark the opening of what is called the Happy Dancers. So now I'm going to go back to that uh, definition of art. <laughs> Let's get to you a good look with that. <laughs> the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination, typically in a visual form, such as painting or sculpture, producing works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. That's not bad, I'll try another one. <laughs> the conscious use of skill and creative imagination, especially in the production of aesthetic objects, also works so produced. Now, I selected another half a dozen, which I'm not going to quote tonight because I don't bore you completely to death. But the one thing I did notice, that in all of the, the uh, definitions I looked up, the, one of the most common words was imagination. I know Kieran Burke for many years. He's my great friend, and he's a great friend too many. And anybody who's uh, lucky enough to be a friend of Kieran Burke, they know and they understand his many wonderful qualities. And anyone who's ever spent any time with him and has been regaled by him, which is pretty much any time you're with him or out having a drink, he's going to be telling you a story or, or, or other, <coughs> he'll know and love what I call his limitless imagination. The amount of times I can tell you that I've heard myself quote stories of my adventures with Kieran, whether it was our encounter with bearded ladies of the Basque country, <laughs> or perhaps the jealous Russian boyfriend breaking down our hotel bedroom door in Paris. <laughs> 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 trying to get a 
his girlfriend back. But each time I relate these stories, I start to believe them more and more. And, 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 and it's not because they're true stories. <laughs> but it's because they're real stories. Kieran Burke's imagination is very, very real. And in all his artistic endeavours, uh, he may not necessarily believe in himself at all times, but he always believes 100% in his imagination. And that, for me, is what makes him a great artist. I'm going to uh, almost conclude, or semi-conclude, with a couple of quotations from some famous artists. And, uh, of course, they're probably not accurate because I got them off the internet. <laughs> but I'm going to try anyway. I'm going to start with uh, the first one I'd like to quote here, if you don't mind, is a, from a chap called Edgar Degas. He says, art is, not what you, art is not what you see, but what you make others see. That's not bad, is it? Yeah. Okay, not bad. Let's, let's try another one. Let's try another chancer. Um, the purpose of art is washing the dust of daily life off our souls. That's not, not bad. Pablo Picasso? Okay. Uh, the only time I feel alive is when I'm painting. <laughs> That's from Van Gogh. There's lots of them here, but I'm gonna, I, I, I kind of like this one. Uh, creativity is allowing yourself to make mistakes, and art is knowing which ones to keep. I think, I think we know that one. The one I kind of like, though, is uh, from this uh, chap, Edward Hopper. I'm sure most of you are familiar with his uh, famous Nighthawks painting. He says, uh, he says if, I, if, I can, if I can say it in words, there'd be no reason to paint. I kind of like. I suppose what my point is is that artists, um, you know, when, being kind of an artist myself, I've kind of been involved in music and stuff like that. Um, uh, you know, artists are often insecure people, and uh, in many ways, it's probably for all kinds of reasons, and particularly the nature of, I suppose, unbridled or the unbridled expression that art is. But yet, something strange, they keep doing it because, and I believe, I believe this sincerely, deep, deep down, that they know that they're good at it, and it's what they do best. And as you can see, judging by most of the quotes there, you'd all agree, I'm sure, that they should stick to the painting. And my point is that the fault is not necessarily with them. You know, it's kind of, I think the fault is with us for expecting them to say something clever as well as do great work. And I believe Kieran Burke does great work. And uh, just to slightly name drop, so do the RUA in the North, where he has exhibited, well, many times uh, in, in their annual, in annual shows. So uh, that's a, a fine endorsement. Uh, anyway, just to wrap up, the first artist I quoted earlier was, as I said, Edgar Degas, and uh, I'd like to finish with Degas again, with presumably his final quote, I'm guessing, because these were uh, among his last words, uh, well, he said this on his deathbed, so I'm guessing he didn't say much more on his deathbed. <laughs> <laughs> he said, <laughs> to quote, he said, damn, and just when I was starting to get it. So my advice to you all here is, yeah. don't worry about trying to get it, <laughs> or even try and pretend you understand it. Just enjoy it. And uh, if you'd like to enjoy it a little longer, buy it.